Are you looking for a way to cut the cord and upgrade your TV sound quality? Then you're in the right place. Hello, I'm Wonder 001 and this is my review of the Roku Stream Bar. This is their smaller offering of their Stream Bars. As the name implies, you get both the beauty of the Roku operating system as well as a sound bar in one piece of equipment. Now, let's actually talk about this particular piece of equipment. It is 14 inches long, has a depth of 4.2 inches and a height of 2.4 inches, making it a remarkably small sound bar and an astonishingly small footprint for the hardware that you're getting. The sound bar itself actually has four speakers in it, two on each side, which are to help fill the surroundings with audio, and then two front-facing speakers for your main audio channels, and I will admit, surprisingly, for the size, it's a very good soundbar. We'll do an audio test a little later, but I was pleasantly surprised with the sound that I got from this versus my TV versus a slightly more expensive model soundbar, period. Not streaming bar, but soundbar. Let's take a look at the rest of the stream bar. On the top, it is matte plastic. It will show fingerprints, but there is no reason for you to have to touch the top of the stream bar at all because there are no physical buttons on this whatsoever. The front is made up of a mesh fabric grill and on the very top right here on top right above the Roku logo there is an LED status light. That LED status light will be on when the Roku is on. It will slowly pulsate when you mute the soundbar. It's a little difficult to see in brighter rooms and it's just one small little nuisance. Uh, it will be red when you're going through the setup process, but other than that, it's just a status light to let you know if it's on or muted. Coming around to either side, there is no actual buttons or configuration to look at there. Those are where the speakers are. Everything about the soundbar is actually in the back of the device here. Now you will notice these brass looking indentations here. These are so you could mount your Roku stream bar if you so wanted to. Now, if we zoom in from left to right, you have a power port right here. And I will admit also, with the fact that this is a streaming player and a sound bar all rolled into one, I was pleasantly surprised at the actual amount of power that it used. If the Roku is just on in standby mode, not doing anything, it uses 4.2 watts of power. When it goes to one of their more interesting screensavers, it goes up to 4.4 watts of power. When actually streaming a 1080, sadly no 4K video for me yet, but using a 1080, and depending on your volume, you can spike it up to about five to 5.4 watts of power usage. Next to that is the optical input. So if you do not have a eARC port on your TV, you will be able to use the optical cable, which is included with your stream bar. Next, you have HDMI input, USB 2.0, sadly not a USB 3.0, and then over here, a reset. These are ventilation holes in the back. I will say that the that the stream bar itself does get a little warm when being actively used, but not terrible enough that you should worry about having it on any type of surface. Now, I did mention that you get an optical cable in the box with your stream bar. Well, you actually get a lot in the box with your stream bar, which I was pleasantly surprised with. Here you can see not only do you get the stream bar itself, which I've been talking about, but you get the remote, which again, we'll mention a little later, but you get included premium high-speed HDMI cable power adapter with a very small power brick for the amount of power usage that the actual stream bar is getting. You also get that optical cable. Again, I mentioned I did a test of another stream bar where you get a adapter for an HDMI cable, not a dedicated optical cable. So the fact that that's included for the price point of this, it was really impressive to me, quite frankly. Now, flipping over our Roku stream bar, you have this large rubber footprint on the bottom, which you really don't have to worry about because there is a channel lip all the way around here. And that channel lip is where your Roku is going to be physically sitting on. So I'm not entirely sure why it's all rubberized. And there you can kind of see couple more ventilation holes up there. And we're just gonna flip this around back to the front of the stream bar because, well, as you saw included with the Roku stream bar is also the Roku remote, which Roku has been working diligently on 
to try and get the most function out of the least form factor. Here we have the Roku remote that comes with the Roku stream bar. I will say that this is kind of their generic everyday remote. It's the one that you get with most of their newer products. At the top, you have a power button, which will allow you to turn on and off your TV set because it does have an IR blaster on the back. Just under that, there is a little pinhole, and that is for the microphone because this remote allows you to use a voice search functionality. To the left, you have your back button, home button, and directional D-pad. This is kind of their older, squishy feeling D-pad. If you watch my review of the Roku Ultra up there in the corner, I'll mention that that's a little clickier. This is definitely their spongier feeling D-pad. It's not bad, but it doesn't feel as if it was quite as much of an upgrade as you would get with the Ultra, which for the price point of the device itself, I would expect a little better. Just saying, Roku. Here you have your 30 second rewind button, your voice command button, press and hold that and you'll be able to ask the Roku specific search queries. You have your options button, which is the asterisk key, your rewind, play pause, and then fast forward. And then as always, your dedicated hard keys. I won't say what they're for because these dedicated hard keys depends on who pays the most to be on the Roku remote. Because again, Roku is an ad platform and this is partially how they make their money because uh, they're not just a streaming service. At the bottom, you have your Roku fabric tag, which adds a little flair and stylization to the remote. I do like that. It keeps things quirky. Coming around to the back, just like the front, you'll notice that it is matte plastic. It has the standard big old divot there. So when you're holding the remote, you actually have a nice channel for your finger to rest in. This remote is thinner than some of their other remotes because it uses AAA batteries as opposed to some of the newer remotes which are using AA batteries. Down here you have your pairing button and then your pairing button light. Not all remotes have a pairing button, but the one that comes with your stream bar does. And we will just close this back up because you saw on the side there, this is one of the features that I feel every remote needs to have nowadays. And that is a volume up, volume down for your the stream bar and a mute button. If your remote does not have a mute button, I do feel sorry for you because realistically, these things are a godsend and you really shouldn't have any device that doesn't have a mute button anymore. Now, the beauty of the Roku remote is it can be paired with any other Roku devices. So as I said before, you can control the volume on your TV set because of the IR blaster, or in this case, because you're using the stream bar, these will control the stream bar. The front also is matte plastic, which I do like because one, it doesn't show fingerprints and it also gives you a little extra to grip onto. So again, it's their standard Roku remote fare. It's nice, it's nice and thin, it's easy to hold onto and it does what it needs to do. Now, another thing to consider when getting a stream bar of any type is actually how easy it is to use the interface for this. I will say that the stream bar was a little different than some of the other Roku devices that I set up in that one, coming along to the back here, the HDMI for setup has to be a arc setup on the TV set. If you do not have that set up for the HDMI, it prompts you to use an optical cable. Uh, it was the first time I had to do that because, well, this is the first time I've set up a sound bar and not just a set-top box. Also noted as part of that setup was picking between Wi-Fi and a Ethernet. As you can see, this device does not have Ethernet. It is strictly a Wi-Fi device. However, it does allow for connection to the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi spectrum, which will allow you to have faster speeds, which is optimal for streaming. If you need this farther away, you can use the 2.4 gigahertz. You'll have slightly slower speeds, but you'll be able to have this further away from your Wi-Fi access point. Coming around to the front again, as I mentioned, Usability is important with something like this, so we will use this as a segue to jump out and check out the user interface for the Roku Stream Bar. If you've had any other Roku devices, it is very similar with a few caveats and places that strictly address the sound bar functionality. I will have a timestamp so you can jump to that particular area if you're familiar with the Roku interface already, or if you want to skip the interface altogether, again, timestamp to get to the sound tests. This will be the user interface walkthrough for the Roku Stream Bar. If you've had any Roku device in the past, the Stream Bar's user interface is very similar to a lot of the other Roku players. However, there are a few extra options that it has because it's a streaming bar and not just a streaming box. 
you'll notice in the background that there is this purple interesting background. This is actually a unique background to the stream bar itself. No other Roku devices that I've tested have actually had this. So just a neat little thing to let you know that, hey, you're doing something a little different than everybody else out there. When you first turn on your Roku stream bar, you are brought to the home page. That is what we are currently looking at. You can see it highlighted over there on the left. If we select the right arrow on the directional pad on our remote control, it brings us over to our tiled user interface of channels. You'll notice that as I scroll, the channel is highlighted. You will also see just above where I have the Plex channel, it says three of 26. That is because this is the third channel of the 26 that I have on the stream bar. Moving further over to the right in the upper right hand corner, you can see the time of day as well as the options menu, which is the asterisk key on your Roku remote. Doing this on a channel will bring up a contextual menu where you can, if we come all the way up to the top, rate that particular channel, move that channel, remove that channel, check that particular channel for update or give feedback to Roku. Now, if we want to move the channel, we hit the OK button on our Roku remote, and this will allow us to move its place in the grid. Once we put it to where we like, we select the OK button on the Roku remote. Going back to the selecting options, which is the asterisk key on the Roku remote, if we come up to remove channel, just like you might think, that will remove the channel from your Roku list. It can always be added back later, but that's how you would be removing it from your current list. I'm going to come down to close and select OK on my Roku remote. Now I'm going to come all the way back over to the left hand menu and then back over again because I want you to notice that big ad that's cycling on the right hand side of the screen. Roku is an ad supported service now so they got their start with Roku players where they were agnostic as to what they would play but they've slowly kind of changed over to a ad based service as many things do because that's how they make their money so just know you're going to see that rotating ad over there just be aware of it most of the time you can just click into like your first row very quickly and not even notice the changing ads over there or if you have a quick key on your remote control you can pop right into netflix from this screen and not have to worry about actually seeing that coming down on the left hand side we have featured free well this is going to be free content that Roku is featuring. Now you'll notice that the channel offering up at the top, so News Live is on the Roku channel, The Office is currently on the Peacock channel, and then this is on Roku, this is on Roku, this is on Peacock. So it will show you where things are coming from, and then it kind of delves into different categories. So if you don't have a streaming service like Netflix, Disney Plus, or the like, there are free options that you can do with Roku. My personal favorite right now is currently Pluto TV. Review up there in the corner if you're interested. On the left hand side again, moving down, we have My Feed. Yes, these are very old and I really need to update my feed with stuff, but what you can do is actually follow a selection, uh, uh, in this case, Game of Thrones, back when Game of Thrones was still coming out. You can follow Game of Thrones. It will let you know when new episodes are added and then selecting it will actually show you where things are. So you can see HBO Max included with subscription and I got a little check mark there next to the HD meaning it's an HD programming and the channel is on my Roku. It's also on Spectrum but you need to have a subscription for that. Amazon Prime, Buy4, Vudu. So that's what the My Feed is. It's a great way to stay on top of things that you like and when they actually come to one of the streaming services that you have or one that is supported by Roku itself. Very useful if you're trying to keep up with a show that is still premiering as opposed to binge watching everything when it's all, all out and done. Back on the left hand side we have our movie store. This is powered by Vudu and here you can see coming over it will allow us to see featured films, featured rentals, deals of the week. Really what this is, it's just a way to rent movies or TV shows through Vudu through your Roku device, which is also why when you set up your Roku account, they ask you for a credit card. It's because if you do these inline transactions, they have to have a way to bill you. Me personally, I do not use the movie store or coming down the TV store, also powered by Vudu, 
but you get the idea. Over here on the right, it will show you a selection of things. So if you're the type of person who likes to rent your stuff or buy your stuff through Vudu and want to watch it directly through your Roku stream bar, you can do that. We're going to come all the way back over to the left, though, because I do not do that. Next down on our list is search. I really like the search function within Roku. It is one of my favorite across all of the streaming devices that I have tested in that it does not just search for stuff on the Roku channel. It searches for everything. Now, here I haven't done any searches yet, but you kind of see over there on the right. I'll come back over, see if it changes. Nope. Okay. It shows you things that you can look for. So I see two Adams Family things there. So what we're going to do is we're going to search for Adams Family. All right. And just without finishing it, you can see that there is a film, Adams Family 2. Here's Adams Family, the original. Here is Adams Family from the 90s. And if we come down here, this indicates that it's a TV show, Adams Family, that ran from 1964 to 1966. You get a lot for your search. And if we come over to the Adams Family from the 90s, you can see over on the right hand side, it gives you a picture of that particular movie, a rating, and runtime coming over. What this will do is show you just for that particular item where you can find it. So again, it's on Pluto for free. Peacock requires a subscription. Amazon Prime, uh, you can rent it. Roku Video, uh, Roku Voodoo Store, again, is a rental. But you get the idea. It, it pulls all of this information. And I just keep going through, and it shows you all the places that you can get it. They pull all of this information across the Roku channels. It does not favor just Roku's channel. If we add this right here, follow this movie, that will add it to the follow area, which is more useful if you do it for TV shows because then you get that notification as to when a new episode shows up. If you do it with a movie, it will tell you when it arrives on a new service that Roku supports. So it's a neat feature. We're gonna select back on our Roku remote and we're gonna do that again because we're gonna come down here and I'm going to delete what we were originally searching for and then we're going to search for a person, not searching for a movie title, but a person, an actor, Mark Hamill. And that I was using the Roku remote to use the voice search. Here you can see Mark Hamill. Well, here we go. It's going to show us things that he's actually in, in one way or another. And it's going to show all of this information. Again, you can see where these particular things are coming from. So included with your Disney Plus subscription, the, he's a voice actor in a lot of these things. Now, the reason I did this first like that is because you'll notice that it just pulled up the things he was in. If I actually come here and do a typed search for Mark Hamill and we come down here, we could see is a person. There's a picture of him, kind of lets you know what's going on. Coming over, it will then show you, you can follow this person again. So if new things come up for him, they'll show up. But this will allow you to see all of the things that he's been in. And if we come over, it'll show you where you can watch what he's been in. Notice for this, we had to type out his name rather than using the voice search, which just searches for movies, TVs, and the like. Now we're gonna clear everything. And notice over here on the right-hand side, it is keeping track of the two things that we typed out for our searches. It did not keep our voice search. If you don't like your search history being here, you simply come down to clear recent, and there we go, we're back to nothing being there. Coming back over to the left-hand side, we're gonna come down now to streaming channels. Well, this is how you get those streaming channels onto your Roku soundbar. Selecting OK or the right arrow key brings you over to where you can get your streaming services, your streaming channels. Right here, we are on Featured. You'll notice on the right-hand side, some of them have check marks in the lower right-hand corner. Those are channels that are already on my Roku stream bar. You can add channels as you like. Selecting the OK button when it's highlighted will allow you to add a channel. You can also view screenshots from that particular channel if you want to get an idea of what the basic user interface looks like for that channel. I am going to select back and one more time back. Notice that you have on the right hand side a basic user rating for that particular channel, which will give you an idea if it's a garbage channel that's just been thrown into the Roku app store. It's not often that that happens, but it does happen on occasion. And you can really just come through here and pick the channels that you like. Notice that was our featured. We can do new and updated. And again, that will just cycle the new and updated channels recommended. If you have no subscriptions to streaming services, you can always come over to top free 
movie and TV channels, and this will let you pick and choose an assortment of free channels that you can watch at supported with your Roku device. And we're going to select back, and it breaks it down into kind of, you know, further things if you want to refine your search for your channels if you don't know the exact channel that you're looking for. We're going to select back one more time. Brings us over to the left-hand side. We're coming down to the My Offers section. Well, My Offers is something that Roku adds to your account once you create it, and it will entice you every now and then with particular things that you can purchase for Ro from Roku at a discount. Now, right now, it's only offering me headphones. Previously, it offered me the Roku Ultra and the Roku Soundbar at a discount, which is primarily while I'm doing these reviews. Selecting back on the left-hand side one more time, we come down to the settings area. This is where the majority of your time will be spent if you need to set up something with your Roku stream bar. Coming over to the right, we have network. Selecting over one more time will give us about the particular network that we're attached to. Right now, I have the stream bar wirelessly on my 5G network, so that would be the information in about. You can check your connection status if your stream bar does not seem to be attaching to your network. You simply check your network connection to see hey, is it actually attached? So here it's checking for available networks and then it will move down to wireless connection. So are we actually attached to the wireless connection and does it have internet? Because sometimes you can be connected wirelessly, but if there's no information actually going into your network, this won't check off. In this case, we're all good. We don't have to worry about it. Next is set up connection. So if you need to, you can come over here and set up your network connection. You can select your network from a list of networks that will show up and then input your password. Bandwidth saver, kind of be a way that uh, the Roku turns itself off from streaming if you're inactive for four minutes. There's a lot of channels that have this option too, but it's on by default. So you don't run through data if you happen to be using a internet service provider that uses data caps. We're gonna select back and move down to remote and devices. Well, right here we have our remote. You can see the voice remote that comes with the Roku soundbar is currently in use. And if I select over one more time, it gives me information about it. Set up a remote for your TV. Again, if you want to add an extra remote or upgrade your remote, you can do so as long as you have the previous remote. You can always use the Roku app as well to add a new Roku remote to your soundbar if you happen to lose your Roku remote. Coming back all the way around, we have remote and devices. We have set up a new device because the soundbar can be used as part of a home theater system. So setting up a new device, it will walk you through what you want to actually set up, whether it be a remote, a wireless speaker, subwoofer. We're gonna select back. You can pair a new Bluetooth device with your soundbar, which is kind of nice that that option is there. I'm going to come back over to remote and devices and then come down to themes. As I mentioned before, this particular theme is a theme expressed just for the soundbar itself, but I have options for other themes. Themes will change the look and feel of your Roku device in its entirety. So if I come over here to the jungle theme and you can either set the theme pack, remove the theme pack, or view screenshots. Now, again, screenshots, just like the channel screenshots, will let you know what it looks like. Here you see it changes the background look of everything, and then the screen saver that you have with your Roku device also changes. One thing, which we will talk about more when we get over to the screen saver, each of these screen savers that are part of a theme pack will have ads, and I'll show you the ads once we get to the screen saver options, except for the kids theme. The kids theme does not have ads. We're gonna come over again and move down to wallpapers because well, you can select different wallpapers that aren't part of a giant theme pack. So hypothetically, if I come over to winter and I view screenshots of this, it'll let you know, hey, here you go. You get to have something a little different. It's nice that Roku has all these seasonal changes and things that kind of help you personalize your Roku device a little more. Next, we come down to screen savers, and this is what I'm talking about. This is the one that is on by default. We're gonna select it using the OK button, and then preview current screen saver. Right here, this is what I'm talking about. These billboards that show up in one way or another in all of the screen savers like this are ads. They are ad supported. If you press the play button or OK button on your Roku remote to try and get out of your screen saver, it brings you to that Roku channel. My wife has done this far too many times as it is. 
The only way to get out of your Roku screensaver with the ads flying around on screen safely is selecting the home button on your Roku remote. Selecting back from our preview brings us back to where we were before looking at all of our screensavers. Now I had mentioned that if we come down to the kids screensaver and we're going to preview that. Very pink, very fun looking, but as it scrolls through, if we did a full scroll, full scroll through this, there are actually no ads that show up. So then you could press your play or OK button and not have to worry about it. But you have this childish looking screensaver. If you can deal with that, it's nice. You can select set as, remove screensaver, view screenshots or rate. Coming back and back one more time, we have sound. You have your default Roku sounds, or you have individual ones from theme packs. So while you can have a theme pack and it changes everything all at once, you can select the sound option here and kind of mix and match and have your own. So you can have jungle sounds with the space screensaver and then have the nebula wallpaper. I mean, it is very customizable. It is neat that it allows you to do that. So those were our sounds. Additional settings, you have seasonal themes. Those are things that come up 4th of July, Christmas, things of that nature, where Roku will automatically override your screen background. It's not too intrusive, but if you don't like that, you can turn it off here. Screen wait time, how long does it take before the screensaver turns on? You have up to a, as low as a minute and up to 30 minutes. In my case, I normally do five minutes. If you really screw things up and you don't want to have to go through the trouble of putting everything back to the way it was, you can select restore default theme and it will change everything back to the way it was. Coming down, display type. Well, here we go. It is detecting, because I have it on auto detect, my 1080 screen. If you want, you can manually change this yourself or if you don't know anything about what you're doing, just leave it on manual detect and it will find the suitable screen type for you. Coming down, accessibilities. This is one that is very in-depth, so I'm going to kind of go through this a little quickly. If you need more information about this, please feel free to let me know. But coming over, you have caption mode, off on always, caption preference, what language is it, caption style. This, this is where Roku really gets in-depth with their information for captioning, because you can pick text edge effect, text size, text color, opacity and all of these will give you a little preview on the right hand side so if you need closed captioning roku service is one of the best that i've seen so far likewise if we come down there's a screen reader speech rate you can choose how fast it is volume how high it is and whether there is a quick button shortcut which by default is selecting the options button four time in rapid succession and that brings us back to our start for our accessibility. Coming down, audio. This is where you get a few extra options because it is a sound bar, not just a streaming set-top box. Menu volume, well, that's going to be the menus that you're moving through. Sound mode, we have normal, bass boost off, bass boost, and reduced bass. So if you're somebody who needs that extra bass, you can put it on. If you don't like bass, well, you can turn that off altogether. If you want to have the bass on, but reduce it to a certain extent, you can do that. Normal, which is what I've been testing it at, I found really is, is nice for the size of the room that I have. Coming down, you have volume mode, which I have off, but you have leveling, which kind of compresses all the sounds to a consistent level. So explosions and speech, they'll all be about the same volume. Night mode sets a maximum threshold for high sounds. So explosions will only get so loud, but this is also how you can get the voices right here. Speech clarity will increase volume of speech through the sound bar. So people who are talking, their speech will be raised up so you hear it more clearly over background noise, music, and explosions. It's a nice feature to have, uh, allowing you the ability to kind of customize what you like to hear and how you want to hear it depending on the time of day and who might be around or might be sleeping. Audio preferred language, you have lots to choose from. I have it on English. And then we are going to select back because those were our audio options. 
That's going to be your big difference between this and the Roku set-top streaming boxes. Screen. Well, guess what? Those things that I mentioned, uh, the featured free, the movie store, the offers, and the shortcuts. Well, if you don't want those, such as the movie store, you can hide that. Don't want the featured free? You can hide that. Don't like offers? Hide that. And selecting the home button on our Roku remote, you'll see that our actual menu system on the side is much cleaner now and shorter. Some people prefer this, some people don't. It's up to you. Roku gives you the ability to change that as you see fit. Coming back to our settings and our home screen, that's what that was. You have payment method next. I'm not gonna highlight that because it shows your payment method and email address right away. Really wish they wouldn't do that, but they do. You do need to have a payment method attached to your Roku account if you don't particularly want to attach your credit card up in the right hand corner. I have a link for privacy.com which will allow you to create a digital credit card that you could attach to your Roku account with a minimum payment threshold of $1. Apple AirPlay and HomeKit, this is where you'd find the information on that. I do not have Apple devices, I run Android so can't really help you too much with this. Legal notice, well as you might imagine, Privacy policy, terms of service, and account terms and condition. All things that you had to agree to using your Roku account and a Roku device. Privacy. This is a big one, and you should change this when you first get your Roku device. Coming over to advertising. Well, you see right here it says limit tracking. Well, if you don't want to have personalized ads, you put a check mark there by selecting OK on your Roku device. I personally prefer them not to give me personalized ads. I just want to have a broad spectrum of ads because they're going to show you ads regardless. If you did not happen to put that check mark on and you were roaming through your Roku device, well, here you go. Reset your advertising ID, meaning any information that they have on you, they will remove and you will get standardized advertising. Coming down to microphone. Well, guess what? You're remote has a microphone on it, channels and the Roku can use your microphone and it gives you options for that. Does it prompt you when it wants to use your microphone? Do you always allow or do you never allow? If you're going to use the voice assistant, the built-in voice search on your Roku remote, you will have to allow, which I just leave at prompt, which lets me know. Same thing for channel permissions. They're going to have those same permissions and if you set them up before you set Always prompt me, you can come in here and reset channel permissions and then everything gets set back to default of what you had. Back over on the right, we have our help. So here we have voice help and Roku tips and tricks. They actually have a channel dedicated just for Roku tips and tricks now, which I greatly appreciate. Last but not least, we have our system. This is gonna be all about your Roku system. About will show you the registered email that you have with your Roku account, so we're skipping that. Time, you have time zone, which can be set automatically or set manually. You have clock format, 12 hour, 24, or off entirely. USB media, well, if you plug something into the USB port, does it automatically open up what's on the USB device? I have it set for prompt. You can set it for on, which will always auto launch it or never auto launch it. Uh, I suggest at least leaving it on prompt because if you put something there, you do want it to open. You just might want to tell it, I want it open, not automatically do so. How will that item on your Roku, on your USB flash drive play? Well, it is going to use the Roku media player. That's kind of the only option you have for that. Control other devices. We have one touch play. You can turn that on or off. What that will do is tell your TV to automatically switch over to the Roku device when you push something on your Roku remote. If it's not already on there, I just live on that Roku HDMI port all the time anyway. Language, lots of language choices. Screen mirroring, well, here you go. You can, again, screen mirroring if you have a phone that supports that. You can be prompted, always allow or never allow, and then screen mirroring devices. Right now, I have it set for none. But if you screen mirrored something previously, it would show up in that list over there. System update will tell you the last time that a system update was run. I happen to run one right before I did my review here. And if we select over, you can actually select check now, but it will always tell you the software version as well as the build number for the Roku OS that is on your Roku stream bar. You have system restart, so if you ever needed to restart the system because it seems a little buggy or slow, you can do that, or you can simply unplug it, but this is one way that you can do that. Guest mode allows you to enter guest mode, which puts your Roku and all the streaming channels on it into a guest mode so that 
people can input their own streaming credentials. This is good if you have an Airbnb or if you have a babysitter coming over and you don't want them looking through your streaming stuff, put it in guest mode. They can put in their own streaming cred credentials. Advanced system settings. Well, here you go. You have factory reset, which puts it back to how it was right when it got when it came out of the box. This is your I need to give this to somebody or I'm reselling it or I just need to set it back to factory. You will have to input a pin code. Network connection reset. Well, if you ever need to reset your network connection, this is another place that you can do that. Device connect will allow you to actually connect devices to the Roku. If you turn that off, well, then you can't connect devices to it. So problematic, probably leave that on. Control by mobile. So that mobile application that I mentioned before, review in the corner up there, this is how you'd allow that. You can either allow it by default on network access, meaning they both have to be on the same network. You can permissive, meaning a code will pop up and that's how you can get in, or you can disable altogether if you don't want to have access via an application to your Roku device. Advanced display settings, so auto adjust refresh rate. This is off by default, but if you select it on, it will adjust the screen's refresh rate based on what channel and what program you're watching and the information that it gets from said channel and said program. LED, on or off, that is the front status light on your Roku soundbar. If it gets in the way and you feel it's too bright, I don't think it's terribly bright, but if you don't want the status light on anymore, just simply come here and turn it off. And back one more time to third-party license. Well, this is gonna be information about your third-party licenses for your Roku stream bar. And then that would bring us back to the about, which is the end of our system, which is the last thing in our settings for our Roku stream bar. As promised, the Roku Stream Bar is very similar to use, just like any other Roku device. Speaking of Roku devices, I always have been hesitant about having an all-in-one device when it came to soundbar and a streaming platform integrated into it. Much like I don't particularly care for smart TVs because the internal brains kind of gets old and wears down over time. The Stream Bar, I will admit, uses the same Roku OS as a lot as all the Roku devices. And my Premier, which is the Roku device that I had previously, lasted me almost four years before I upgraded. And the only reason I upgraded is because there was a really good deal on the new Roku Ultra review over there in the corner. So I didn't notice any sluggishness in the old system. And the fact that this has a quad core processor built into it kind of makes me feel much more comfortable recommending something like this because it will last much longer than I would have thought something like this would. Now, obviously, I've been beating around the bush because, well, it's a sound bar and streaming device rolled into one. Obviously, the question is, well, how good does this sound? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a sample of sound that came directly from my TV and then the same audio clips coming from the stream bar. Do keep in mind that the audio quality will depend on how you're actively listening to this video. I did use my best microphone, again, review over there in the corner, to try and get the best quality that I could for the purposes of this. But here we go, audio sample for the Roku stream bar.
say this is the life we chose, but I don't want to do this anymore. I just want to go. I will admit, I was very surprised at the audio quality from the stream bar. And primarily because I said I originally got a sound bar from a much higher end manufacturer that is much larger. So the fact that this doesn't quite sound as good as that, but the quality that I got from this, just being a non-audiophile, I was pleasantly surprised. Now, the question then becomes, well, how much does a stream bar which has two functionalities rolled into one, cost. That's the really good part about this. You can pick up the Roku Stream Bar anywhere from $125 to $100 currently at time of recording. Prices may vary, or if you get it on Lightning Deal, you might be able to get it cheaper. For that price and size and form factor and the fact that Roku is still one of my preferred streaming OSs that I recommend to people every time they want to start cutting the cord, that is a very desirable price in a very desirable form factor from a very desirable company. Let me know your thoughts. Do you still use or like Roku devices? Is this your first time getting a Roku device and you were just looking to find out more information about that? Let me know in the comments area below. With all of that being said, if you haven't gotten the idea, if you need a streaming bar and a new streaming platform, Highly recommend checking out the Roku Stream Bar. With that being said, I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee. Link in the description below. Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.